Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to turn this photo into this poster. It's been a long time since I've done this, about 15 years or so, so we'll see if I can remember all of my old tricks. Before we get started, only 8.7% of you are actually subscribed to the channel. So please make sure you subscribe to support the channel. It really helps me out and I really appreciate it. Okay, so I have this layered file right here where it has all of these original photos of this photo shoot from Hillary Duff. All right, so what I'm gonna do is duplicate this layer and we're gonna do it on a new file and hit okay. I'm gonna go ahead and close these two files right here because we're only gonna be working with this one. Okay, so the very first thing we need to do is we need to isolate the different color ranges. So we've got highlights, midtones, and shadows. So what we're gonna do is go up here to select color range. And right here under select, we've got highlights. We're gonna hit okay. And now we've got all the marching ants going around all of the highlighted areas. So I'm gonna hit command or control J on my keyboard. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna output a new layer with all of those highlights. So I'm gonna go over here to layer number five and just rename it to H. And that's H for highlights. So now I'm gonna go back down to our original layer, go to select, color range, and midtones, and hit okay. And we're just gonna do the same thing there. We're gonna copy the midtones up, and then change layer five to M. And now go back again one more time to color range, shadows, and hit okay. And now we're gonna do command J or control J again, and double click on this and name it S for shadows. All right, so even though it's not gonna change the way it looks, I'm gonna go ahead and hide these layers right here. And we don't have to delete this original layer. We can actually just hide this for now. So what we can do is just toggle on each one and you can see just what the shadows look like. So we are copying the shadows right there, putting it on its own layer. And what you can do here is you can create your new background. This is actually gonna be a temporary background. We'll bring in another one later. But I'm just gonna fill it with black right now, or you can also fill it with white. And you can see exactly how the dynamics of those colors are interacting with each other. And you can toggle on the M right here just for the midtones. This is actually a really cool effect and you can do some cool stuff with just this layer. And then this is what the highlights look like, just very like electrified. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill each one of these layers with some artwork. Here's this really cool marble paper texture that I found, I've had this forever. So what we're gonna do is click and drag this over into our other file. And I'm just gonna go ahead and center this in our document. And what we're gonna do is enlarge this. I'm gonna go all the way beyond the art bounds of that. And now with this layer above the shadows layer, we're gonna select the layer five and the shadows layer. And we're gonna clip this inside of the shadow layer. So with both of these layers selected, we're gonna hold down option or alt until you see this little arrow right here, and then just click on that. And you can see the artwork is actually filling up just that shadow layer. And now we're gonna do the exact same thing with more patterns. So what I'm gonna do with this is this is actually one that I created when I was in college. This is a marble painting texture. If you've never done marble painting, I definitely recommend doing it. It's a lot of fun. So I'm going to go up here to image adjustments and hue and saturation. I want this to be a lot more saturated than it actually is. So we'll bring it all the way up to about 80 and we'll worry about changing the hue after we drop this in here. We'll just kind of see how those colors work with each other. So again, I'm going to center this on our canvas. We're just going to stretch it beyond the bounds right there. And now just like we did with the shadows layer, we're gonna select both of these and we're gonna clip this to that. And as you can see, it's starting to get really dramatic here. All right, then I've got another watercolor texture here. We're gonna drop this onto here and let's enlarge this all the way past the bounds of our document here. And now we're gonna select both of these and clip this to the highlights layer. And it doesn't really matter which ones you clip to which layers, just as long as you have a good array of patterns and textures that work well together. And you can always modify them later to however you want them to look. Okay, now we're gonna add in some paint splatters. All right, so I do have several of these and what I'll do is I'll zip all of these up and put them in a Google Drive link and I'll leave it down in the description for you. It's been a long time since I've downloaded these, so who knows if they're actually still out there available to download. So I'm just gonna enlarge this to however big you wanna enlarge it. And so we're gonna change the blending mode of this to darken. And now we can move this around wherever we want those paint splatters to be. So I'll just do something kinda of like this. We'll just put it right there. And then we'll just repeat the process with something like this. I'm gonna rotate this. A lot of this is just kinda of placing things wherever you wanna place them. change that blending mode to darken. It gets rid of that white background and it just shows the paint splashes. Just make sure that it's nice and balanced however you decide to do this. One thing that I think I'll do is this background is looking a little bit too pink. 
and we're gonna be adding in a paper texture over this, so I don't want that pink to interfere with it. So what we're gonna do is right above this pink layer, we're gonna add a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And we're gonna make sure that we go right here and clip it just to the hue and saturation layer. And we're gonna change master to reds. And we're just gonna bring down the saturation. And we can bring up the lightness. And then we'll do the same thing with the magentas and just get it completely gray right there. And I'll bring this up just a little bit so that that way we can see that it's kind of mostly white. That way when we bring in our paper texture, it'll have a nice vintage look and that pink's not gonna interfere with it. Okay, I'm thinking that we'll probably move this up here to the very top. I don't like how that's covering her face, so we'll just kind of do like a rotation right here. And we'll bring in another one and just kind of lay it on top. I like the idea of maybe the entire thing covering this. So let's see how that looks when we switch it to our blending mode. Change it over to darken, and that is actually looking really cool. One thing that I will do is erase where it's covering her face up because I don't really want that to happen. So we'll kind of protect the area of her face right here. Everything else is totally fine. Then I'll grab this last one here. Kind of go ahead and close a couple of things here so we can actually get to those other files. In fact, to avoid any confusion, I just closed everything except for our working file and then just reopen these again. All right, let's enlarge this up and change this over to darken. You don't have to use darken. You can use any blending mode that you want for whatever look you're going for. I just find that it works best for this particular document. All right, let's erase these areas that are covering up her face. And down here in our first marble paper texture, it is covering up her eye right there. So I'm just gonna erase that area. I think that everything else is looking good, but you always wanna make sure that you can see the subject's eyes. All right, and now we will drag this up on top here, go all the way to the top and let's enlarge it to where it kind of largely covers this bottom right area. Change that over to darken. And for the most part, we have a nice even fill going on with all of these different textures, but we might go in and just kind of see where we can make some adjustments here and there to where it's fairly even across the entire canvas. Let's move this down in the bottom. All right, that's looking really nice. All right, for the most part, I think this is looking really cool. So now we're gonna bring in our final paper texture that's gonna cover the entire artwork. And this paper texture right here is the same one that I used in the original and I've been using it for years. So we're gonna drag this over here. Let's bring it all the way to the top and let's center it. And now let's enlarge it. I'm gonna hold down shift so we can go exactly where the bounds of our document are. And then from this point, I highly recommend trying every single blending mode to get the exact look that you're going for. So let's cycle through these. Multiply is looking really good. Even color burn is looking really good, but it is taking away a lot of the color from the paper. Linear burn is looking nice, giving it a really nice warm feel, but it's a little bit too dark. Difference is looking really cool, especially when we go invert it. I think that one might be my favorite. Exclusion is looking really nice, very washed out right here. And when we invert the colors, it's giving it a really cool faded look. Divide is really nice. It's giving it a really big pop of color, but it's completely taking away that color from the paper. All right, I think we're gonna go with difference and just invert the colors. I think that one's my favorite. All right, so what we wanna do in this area is we have a little section right here that's obviously cut out from the poster, so it wouldn't actually have any of those effects there. So what we're gonna do is click on the magic wand tool, and we're just gonna click on this, and we're gonna hit Command or Control J, and that's gonna duplicate that layer. Let's invert those colors back, and then change the blending mode to normal. Now this little section right here no longer has the effects that the rest of the poster would naturally have. And then we'll do the same thing down here in this little section. Command or Control J, invert the colors and change it to normal. All right, now what we'll do is we'll go all the way to the top layer. I'm gonna click on hue and saturation. And this is gonna target everything that is underneath that hue and saturation layer. But if we want to, we can go in here and really shift the colors, how everything is looking. You can really change up the look of the entire thing by doing just this. You can also go in and target specific colors. So I don't want the yellows to change, but maybe I want the reds to change. So I want those reds to be a little bit richer. We'll go like right in this direction. We could even change the saturation and make it really, really psychedelic. But when we do this, overall, the poster is still a little bit on the darker side. So we're gonna go down here, create a new fill adjustment layer, and go up to curves. 
And now we can just slightly adjust this to where we brighten it up a little bit more. And we can also bring up this side to increase that contrast. And I think this right here is looking really cool. Now what's great about all of this is that we still have our layered file. So if we want to go in here and change any of these paint swatches around after we've made those adjustments, you can go in and do that. So right up here in the top right section, maybe I want to bring this down a little bit more like this to where it's a little bit less on her. And then just to kind of help fill in the rest of these areas, I'm going to bring in one more layer of the paint. And for now, we'll bring it all the way to the top to where it's completely unaffected by everything else that we've done. And let's center this up. The colors in here actually match the rest of the artwork very well. So we'll bring this all the way to the top and we'll play around with the blending modes until we get something that looks really nice. We want just a nice subtle layering of this. So I might end up going with soft light. Actually, saturation is looking pretty cool, but it does interfere kind of with the rest of what's going on. So it's making it just a little bit too busy and just kind of imbalancing all of those colors. So I think I'll go with soft light and bring the opacity of it down to 50%. All right, so here is our final product in Photoshop. I think this is looking really cool and this would look awesome printed out on, especially like a matte paper. Or if you were to do something like a Guy Klee print, this would be perfect for that. Let's zoom in all the way to 100% and let's check out some of these really cool textures that we've got going on here. This is something I don't really do a whole lot of, so I wanna show you all of the different close-up textures and imagery and all the really cool things that end up happening here. This is looking very, very cool. I love all these psychedelic colors. Especially in this area where we've got those patterns really showing through. This is so cool. So yeah, you can do something like this in Photoshop. It is a little bit more on the intermediate level. It's not really so much beginner, but it's a great way to learn about blending modes and clipping layers together. I hope I taught you something today. If I did, please like, share, and subscribe to support the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.